Hello, welcome back. The title of this lesson is called Distance on the Coordinate Plane. This is part one. In this lesson, we're going to use the skills that we have learned before. We're going to be plotting points on the coordinate plane, and then we'll ask a question about what we have drawn, and we can then see that by plotting points on a plane, we can actually solve real math problems. So let's take a look at our first problem. Here we have our coordinate plane, as we always have here, and we have the question, a line runs from 2, 3 to 8, 3. How long is the line? Now, if you don't draw a graph of this, it's very hard for us to just look at that and say, I know how long that line is. But by plotting it, we can see what we're trying to do here. The first uh, point is 2, 3. 2, 3. So how do we plot that? X is 2, Y is 3. So we go to X is 2 and Y is 1, 2, 3. Always X, Y, remember? 2 is first and 3 is second. So it's 2, 3 and there is one end of the line. Next, 8, 3 is the end point of the line. X is 8. So we go to X is equal to 8 and then we go up 3 units for Y. 1, 2, 3. Y is equal to 3 and X is equal to 8. And here is the end point of the line. So we have now two points of the line. So the line runs from this point to this point. We have now drawn those points. And now what we want to do is actually draw a line between these points. Now I could just freehand it, but let's make it a little bit neater and try to draw this line as straight as we can from the end point. So now we've drawn kind of a line segment that starts at this point and it terminates over here. Now the question, isn't really asking us just graph the thing. The question is, how long is the line? So you might think about this in terms, instead of just thinking of it as coordinates, think of it as city blocks, right? This is one block, two blocks, three blocks. Or you can think of the x-axis being in feet or the x-axis being in meters. So this is the end point at two meters, comma, three meters from the origin, from the origin meaning the, cor the corner here. And then the other end point is eight meters away and then three meters up. So what is the length of this line in meters? Well, I just need to count how many meters uh, long the line is. So starting from the starting point, we just count one, two, three, four, five, six. And the answer to this is the line is six units long. So the distance I'll put here, or the length of this line is what? Six. Now I didn't put meters or kilometers or anything because the problem doesn't tell me what units I'm working at. But the point isn't really the units. The point is to understand what you're doing. If you're representing, maybe you're planning a city, right? And you're trying to figure out where the buildings are gonna be in the city. Then maybe your, uh, your uh, uh, coordinate system, the numbers might be measuring kilometers. So if this is the city hall, the center of the city, let's say, then maybe two kilometers to the right, east, and then three kilometers up from city hall, which is the starting point, that would be maybe the fire station. Maybe that's what this point is. And then maybe the schoolhouse is way over here from, city, from the center of the city, eight kilometers this way and three kilometers up. So the two endpoints might be measured in kilometers from the city center. Right now we have a straight line between the fire station, I think I said, and, and maybe a school. How many kilometers is it from the starting point to the ending point from the fire station to the school? Well, we can just count because we know if these are measured in kilometers and these are measured in kilometers, then the distance along the line will be in kilometers because that's one kilometer, one more, one more. So one, two, three, four, five, six kilometers. Now I'm, I could put kilometers here, but the Problem doesn't tell us. I'm just giving you an example of what it is. Really, it's six distance units along that line. That's the whole point, all right? So we use grids like this um, to represent locations on Earth for maps. You know, you might look at a map or a globe and you might look at longitude and latitude. That is a different kind of coordinate system, but it's the same idea. You have to go one direction, then the other direction to find a point on the map. And then the distance between the points, you can then measure by using, you know, actually measuring it a straight line distance. Problem number two, it says a line runs from this point to this point. How long is the line? Same story. So let's plot the points of the line. Five comma nine, X is five, right here, X is five, and then Y is nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. The point would be right here at this intersection. Five for X and nine for Y. Second point, five comma one. Five is here. 
for x, don't forget x is first, and then y is one, we just go up one unit. So it would be right here. That would be the endpoint of that line there. All right, now, just to make it neat, let's go ahead and just connect these guys so we can see what we're dealing with here. And the line would look something like this. So the question says, how long is the line? Another way of asking that is what is the distance between these points along that line? So the distance, or the length of that line, same thing, is what? We just start from one endpoint and count. One unit, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight distance units. The distance is eight distance units, right? And of course you can count going this way or you can count this way. We can go up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight distance units. Now again, we could have the city center be right here at the zero, zero point of the coordinates. And then this might be representing my home five kilometers east and one kilometer up. That's my house re relative to the center of the city. And then maybe my work is up here, five, five kilometers east and then nine kilometers up. That could be my work. So my question would be then, how far is it from my home to my work? So I just count. And if all of this is in kilometers, it's one kilometer, two kilometers, three, four, five, six, seven, eight kilometers away. That's just one example. It could be representing lots of different things, but that is what we use coordinate systems for, to measure things. That's what we actually find it useful for. All right, problem number three. It says a rectangle has points uh, 1 comma 5, 1 comma 1, 7 comma 1, 7 comma 5. What is the perimeter? That's what this means. Perimeter equals question mark. Remember, perimeter is the distance all the way around the object. You just add up the distance of all the sides. So first we have to plot these points and see what kind of shape it makes. Rectangle, it says 1 comma 5, x comma y. x is 1, 5 is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for y. So it's 1 for x, 5 for y, so here is one corner of the rectangle. All right, next, 1 comma 1. x is 1, y is also 1, so we go x1 and y1. Next we have 7 comma 1, that means 7 for x and 1 for y, so that means the next corner of the rectangle is here. You could probably guess where the final corner is, 7 comma 5. x is equal to 7 and y is equal to 5, so the final corner is right here. Now, what does this thing look like? You can already kind of see, but let's just be, you know, let's just be as, as clean as we can so we can really understand everything. We'll draw those two sides like this, and then we will draw the final two sides, if I can line it up correctly, like this. And of course it forms a rectangle. So you might think maybe you're planning a city and maybe the, um, Maybe this uh, rectangular region is representing the city park, then the center of the park, Central Park, let's say, is a rectangle, all right? So what you do is you say this is the center of the city and one corner is one kilometer over and one kilometer up. The other corner is this one. The other corner is seven kilometers and one up and seven kilometers and five up. And this makes a rectangle. What is the perimeter of that park? How many kilometers all the way around that park? How do we figure it out? We have to add the distances up. What is the distance from here to here? We just count one distance unit, two, three, four distance units. So we have a four here. What is the distance unit over here? It's also four, one, two, three, four. So we have a four plus a four. What is the distance unit from here going over? One, two, three, four, five, six. And this distance is the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. So what we have to do is we have to add these up. Now I know that six and four make 10, and I know that this six and four also make 10. So without even doing much, I know that I have 10 plus 10, it's gonna be 20. So it's going to be a perimeter equal 20. Now 20 what? Well, it depends. What are you measuring at? If you're measuring a gigantic city park, and all of these distance units are in kilometers, then the perimeter is 20 kilometers. If you're measuring maybe a quilt you're making, then maybe this is in centimeters, or maybe it's in meters or something like, maybe it's something like that, then the perimeter would be in the same units of meters or whatever it is you're measuring. So here I'm just gonna leave it as perimeter equal to 20 because I haven't really told you what the distance unit is. All right, we have one more problem. Let's conquer that one right now. All right, here we have problem number four. We have a rectangle with these points and we'll wanna find the perimeter. We're gonna do the same exact process we did last time. The first point, three comma nine, 
X is three, go up nine units for Y. That means one corner is right there. Next, three comma three, that means X is three, and Y is also three, that means a point goes right here, three comma three. Four comma three means X is four, and Y is three, so that means the point is right here. Finally, we have four comma nine. X is four, Y is nine, Y is nine, that means the fourth corner is right here. All right, and just for neatness, we can try to draw this. So we have one side of the rectangle right there, we have another side of the rectangle right there, and then we can draw this side right here, and then we can draw this side right here. So again, we could be making a bedspread or a quilt. This could be uh, some kind of like plot of land for farming. I mean, who knows what it is, but it makes a rectangular region. What is the perimeter? So we have to add up the distances. What is the distance between here and here? It's only one distance unit, so there's a one here. Then what is the distance here? Also one, all right. Now what is the distance between here and here? We just count. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six distance units. The distance here is the same thing. One, two, three, four, five, six units. All right, six plus six is 12, then 13, then 14. So what we get out of that is 14 is equal to the perimeter. Right, so let's say I was making a garden and this is maybe like the center of my house. The one corner of the garden is three meters away from my door and three meters up. And then the other corners are all laid out, as I've said, but everything is in meters. Then what we're figuring out is the distance all the way around this thing would be 14 meters. That's what the perimeter is. If we're measuring something smaller, like something you're like a craft, and it's in centimeters, then all of these distances will be in centimeters and the perimeter will be 14 centimeters. If you're measuring something in kilometers, it will be in kilometers and so on. So here we have conquered the idea of finding distance using a coordinate system or a coordinate plane. We use the points that we have now learned how to plot to mark locations on the coordinate plane. And now we're starting to connect the dots here with a line. And then here we can enclose shapes and start to ask mathematical questions like perimeter, later we'll be doing area and so on related to those shapes. Here I've kept it pretty simple with rectangles, but you can see how you can make very intricate, detailed, complicated shapes and still use the coordinate system to answer really important questions. So it's a very important skill. Practice these yourself. Follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue conquering the topic and getting practice with distance on the coordinate plane.